We live in a world that is smaller and more connected than ever before. We hear this all the time, right? What else do we hear all the time? That we are community schools. We hear all the time that we are inclusive schools. And we hear all the time that we are international-minded schools. Learning 2 this year is hosted by NIS, who makes it quite obvious. This is our values that they hold dear to what their school is about. And it's important, and it's awesome. My school does too. But where do we take it from here? The question I want to ask you is, are we educating globally and what this means? So educating globally is not this conference. It's not professional development. It's not something that we're all going to do here and have an awesome time over these next couple of days doing workshops and sessions and having a great time and getting together as one big family and then taking all those little bits and pieces and running back to our, wherever home is, bringing them back to our school, to our classroom, and integrating little bits and pieces into our practice. Because the reality is, Saturday night, see you at the next Learning 2 next year. Educating globally is not your professional learning networks, where you're sharing projects, celebrating successes, what's going on in your classroom, tweeting, liking, retweeting, so it may gain your Twitter followers. Educa educating globally is creating a mindset where we all work together to create projects that are bigger than just what's going on in our classroom. These are projects that work with everybody in the world in mind, with all of our students as collective learners. Because our students are already doing this. They've created massive global communities based around uh, video games and fun, creating memes where millions of people contribute to make each other laugh. And they're building play-based global communities without realizing it. It's the foundation of becoming a global educator. And these communities allow us to do amazing things. These communities are getting together, and it doesn't matter who you are, what your background is, where you are, what's going on in your life. If you want to be part of a community and do something awesome and fun, you can join any of these communities and be part of the group and celebrate the successes. But not a lot of recognition of, well, what's different about us? What's the same about us? What is it that's globally significant? Steven Pinker and Kevin Kelly have written two incredible books that have come out in the last couple of years, uh, inspiring, and I highly recommend them. And a key component, a thread that runs through both of the books, is that it's in our DNA to communicate and collaborate. It's what has created us as homo sapiens to be champions of this planet and now continuing to reach out and explore others. So what's key is that we are creating these global environments, that we want to be global educators, but we're not reaching our students where they are. They're communicating, they're collaborating, they're working in giant networks, but we're not reaching out outside of the walls of our classroom. I work at the Istanbul International Community School in Turkey. And just last week, we launched this project called the What is on Your Virtual Plate Project, where students from second grade to 12th grade are recreating their last meal using virtual and augmented reality, doing research, scripting voiceovers, and providing an experience where you or any student anywhere in the world can look through their phone down at the desktop in front of them and see the perspective of another student and understand where that student's plate of food came from, who prepared that food, and what is the same and different of us all around the world. My name is Juno. I'm in 10th grade at Istanbul International Community School in Istanbul, Turkey. This is what I ate for dinner last night. It consists of kimbap, miso soup, a bowl of salad, and a glass of water. The kimbap was made of rice, vegetables, and beef, and it was made by my mother. We're doing these projects in one hour from grades 2 through 12, quickly and easily, and it's not just about introducing AR and VR into your classroom quickly, easily, cheaply, but it's also about building connections. It's also about how we build a community of learners all around the world who have a better understanding of each other, what makes us the same, what makes us different, and why that is. Because if we all go back to our schools, and live in our silos and work inside of our classroom, inside of our walls, and we don't see our learners as co-learners with students in other parts of the world, then we've fallen back in the same trap, and we're not meeting these 
students where they really are. We've got the groundwork already put in place. Those of us that are working with the IB know that international mindedness is pounded into our curriculum all the way across the board. Our ISTE standards are ensuring that we're providing tools that create a collaborative environments and open access to be able to use the type of tools that make this kind of thing possible. And the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals have been communicated in a way that we can integrate this into our classrooms to talk all of the time about what uh, injustices are going on around the world, why that is, and what we can do about it. So I challenge you this weekend, while you're at Learning 2, and when you go back to your home, wherever that may be, to rethink how you create your lessons, your subjects, your curriculum, your scope and sequence, your school vision, to ensure that we are global educators. And I suggest that we don't do it next week, we do it today, and we do it together.